All right, welcome back to the Neo 2 uh, walkthrough videos. I'm trying to keep these ones brief um, so you can get to the good information as quickly as possible. Just going to show you a quick build video. So I've cleared out all of Mino and I wanted to show you what I'm going for in terms of the build. Um, and this one makes it pretty easy in my opinion to sort of get through the early game content. So in terms of stats, I'm focusing on dexterity and magic. And the reason for that is because dexterity governs ninjutsu, magic governs onmyo. I can go ahead and upgrade my other stats later on, but for now I want to be able to use uh, as much onmyo and um, ninjutsu as possible. Now for the onmyo skills, I've gone ahead and grabbed purification, resistance, and then steel talisman. And with steel talisman, I also got steel decree so that uh, the um, companions and the benevolent spirits and anybody that I summon will be able to benefit from my steel talisman as well. I also grabbed pure mind and pure heaven cursed earth uh, in order to be able to get access to sloth. And sloth talisman is really, really helpful um, in new game. It slows down enemies and it lasts a good while if you get your magic up to a decent amount. So that'll slow the enemy down and let you sort of time the attacks a little bit easier, escape from grapples, all of that kind of stuff. I also have barrier talisman. Um, and the reason for that is because of the Kusari Gamma buff that I use to increase my attack power, uh, this one will let me recover my key more quickly. That buff on, on Kusari Gamma, when I buff my attack power, I also take more key damage. So this help makes up, helps make up for that. And it also automatically dispels any Yokai realm uh, that you enter. I picked up Barrier Decree as well so that my companions or any AIs uh, will get the benefit from it as well. Um, I picked up Lightning Talisman, which is a prerequisite for Pure Heaven Cursed Earth, which was a pre prerequisite for Sloth. It's also a good weapon buff. I've started to move my way up here to get Devigorate. Um, and Devigorate is pretty handy because it takes down the enemy's attack power. And it lasts a decent amount of time. So it's worth tossing on you know, having maybe two of those uh, prepared for a boss fight so that you can refresh maybe halfway through the boss fight, but that'll let you uh, reduce their damage to you uh, significantly for most of the fight. What I'm really going for is a weakness talisman, so I also picked up water talisman here. Um, again, so I've got all of the elemental buffs basically at this point, so purification, fire, water, lightning. I can just toss up whichever one is appropriate for the enemy that I'm fighting. Water stop was a prerequisite to go up here and get weakness. So as soon as I clear whatever mission is necessary to get access to this, then I'm going to pick up weakness next. For ninja, uh, you want to start out first by getting tiger running in sneak attack. So sneak attack is hugely important for being able to creep up behind enemies and do start off the fight with a lot of damage. A lot of times you'll one shot with this too. Um, you pick up Catwalking and Sneak Thief as soon as you're able to. Um, those two let you basically run through missions without anything being able to spot you as long as it's up. If you attack something, you'll break Sneak Thief, but you don't break Catwalking. So you can just have a few more Sneak Thief scrolls prepared, and you'll be able to refresh after you kill something, um, and you can creep through levels and sort of scout things out a little bit. Tiger running is handy too if you just want to sprint through levels, but it has a high jutsu cost, so not really worth having a whole lot of those. It's kind of good if you're, you're running back to your corpse or something like that. Um, I've also picked up poison uh, for Galnut Broth and Hemlock, so I can do poison stacking or I can do Hemlock, um, which is paralysis. And the reason why I'm picking up those is so that I can come down here and eventually get Power Pill. And Power Pill is a sort of uh, jutsu to raise your attack power. Eventually, I'm thinking we'll be able to get, um, at least in Neo, we were able to get the ability to instantly cast Ninjutsu and Onmyo on ourselves. So I'm hoping that's the case with this too, because it's a good backup uh, attack power buff. Over here, I've picked up Gunpowder Bomb and Smoke Ball, and over 
here are three new shadow arts. So you've got Flaming Heron, which is the fire ninjutsu, Raijin, which is the lightning, and then Yaroka Water, which is the water damage uh, ninjutsu. So I am going to buff those up and, and um, increase those over time so that I can prepare more of them. But those are actually fairly good damaging abilities, and they're each elemental, so you can use those to get confusion fairly easily. I picked up Fire Shuriken because I'm actually heading up here towards Concealment next. Um, so Mystic Art, that's going to be the first Mystic Art that I can get, which is sort of a permanent passive. Um, so once I clear the mission that's necessary to pick that up, I'm ready to, to purchase it. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have gone for Shuriken, but I had a bunch of extra ninjutsu, so I figured why not. Speaking of Shuriken, uh, I've got uh, Shuriken here as well as Kunai and Rakansen coin. So Rakansen doesn't do a whole lot of damage, but it only costs 10 gold and it's unlimited. So it's kind of handy if you want to interrupt somebody from healing or something like that. It's kind of handy to have that one prepared. Call drops as well. Uh, you can drop those on the ground and slow enemy movement. They don't last a, a really long time yet, but they are kind of handy. And with Poison uh, Galnath Broth, that gives you access to Poison Shuriken if you want it, and you can go up here to get pa Paralysis Shuriken as well. Now, I'm not sure what this one is going to turn into, so I probably won't go down that line right now. So the next ones I'm going to pick up are Concealment, um, when it's avail available, and Power Pill. But all in all, doing pretty good. Um, I'll probably pick up Dashing at some point, and... Um, dodging as well, so I want to go up this this path here to get quick change as quickly as possible, so that'll give me one free death, and uh, dodging will reduce uh, key consumed by dodging, and I'm guessing this will be something that we can stack over time, so you can increase these multiple times if they have alt, um, up arrows, and for most of these, they'll if they're actives, that'll reduce the jutsu cost for preparing them. Same thing with Omnio. Um, for shifting, I got. I went ahead and got um, this uh, special finesse invigorate. So that increases your key recovery speed whenever you do a burst counter. Kind of handy. Um, I've gone up here, picked up fiendish maw, uh, demonic tenacity, and destruction um, to make my yokai shift a little bit more effective. Same thing with uh, devour yokai realm and yokai within. Um, so this one actually, even if you're not in yokai shift it just reduces your key risk recovery speed penalty whenever you're in yokai realm so that's a good one to kind of boost up um, you'll want to get this one too for the dark realm um, when you can and then i've moved down here um, this is the one that i invested more points into so you can perform a dodge in the middle of a quick attack which is pretty handy but only available when in your feral form um, I think that one actually comes with it, uh, and then quick attack immediately after, yeah. So those two come automatically, but I, what I did is I worked down this part to be able to get Special Finesse Refresh 2, which restores 64% uh, of your key whenever you do a burst counter. So, well, if I raise it, it will. I think it's a little bit lower right now. Um, and in the process, I got this uh, Demonic Dexterity, which reduces the depletion of Yokai Shift Gauge when dodging. Very handy, particularly for Feral. Uh, and I also can imbue my active skills with Lightning Element. And I'm going around the tree and actually picking up the skills that allow me to imbue. So this one here, Arcana of Water, allows me to imbue with Water Element. Um, and those can be used to stack uh confusion really really quickly i've also picked up this one here soul atrophy which uh, reduces the enemy's maximum key by um five percent more than normal when using yokai abilities so not hugely important what i'm really after down this tree um, once i'm able to get it is the arcana of power which gives you the corruption element so you can put that on an ability and it'll let you stack uh, confusion and corruption. Um, and then I believe all of it for now. Uh, oh yeah, I've got to go into Kusitagama and Samurai. 
So for Samurai, uh, I've gone ahead and picked up uh, Key Pulse, Purify Yokai Realm, and Running Water Man. Um, I've also done all three for Heaven and all three for uh, Earth. I've also picked up Damage Boost Magic because I have a high magic skill, so I can put that on an ability that I want to do a lot, want to have do a lot of a lot of damage. Um, so that's a good one to stack in. Um, apart from that, I've kind of started moving over here towards Flux. Uh, I'll probably pick up Flux too next, um, so it increases your key recovery when you switch stances during Flux. Um, and so that's kind of handy. You can actually gain more key than you've used with the combination of these two if you change stance. And you can actually, if you're quick about it, you can change stance twice so that you're back in your original stance. Um, so you don't need to worry about being in the wrong stance or anything like that. Get in the habit of switching twice and you'll be right back where you started whenever you do a key pulse. And I'll probably do a video showing you how to do that if, if uh, P war or somebody doesn't beat me to it. For Kusitagama, um, I'm I've basically picked up the abilities that I need. Um, starting off with with waterfall um, and serpent strike to come up here to get deliverance. So that's kind of handy uh, handy ability that you can get at the end of a combo. I've picked up foot sweep because I had an extra point. Not really all that necessary yet. Um, Serpent Strike is kind of handy, so you can pull the enemy to you uh, when you hold R2 if you're in high stance. Reaper is the first ability that you can get access to that's universal, so you can use it in high, mid, low. Um, so I keep that slotted until I can come over here and get uh, Renegade Dragon. So Renegade Dragon is one of my favorite abilities. You can use it in all, all stances, but I need to clear a mission that I haven't gotten to yet in order to get access to that but I've basically come down here and prepared myself just getting these abilities so that I can access this one as soon as it's available. Um, after Reaper, I picked up Summer Twilight. So this is the attack buff that I mentioned earlier on. So you can do this anytime it drains all of your key basically, but it'll give you a pretty decent duration attack strength buff, but you also take more key damage, which is why the Barrier Talisman is really helpful to pair with this. Um, I've also picked up Whirlwind Kick just to have a universal R1 that I can use. Um, and I have Relentless, which gives me more key whenever I have Kusitagama equipped. Finally, um, I've just picked up these two, uh, Retreating Strike and Chain Pull, so that eventually I'll be able to get Relentless too. Not really all that important if you're running low on Kusitagama um, skill points. That is the build in a nutshell, but I'll show you the jutsu that I've equipped for now. So for ninjutsu, I've equipped shuriken and kunai just so that I have them available if I want them. But really, the main ones that I'm equipping are uh, Rakansen coin, so I use that quite a bit. Uh, Shadow Arts Raijin, Yaroka, and Flaming Heron. So I don't have a ton of these um, equipped right now, but just enough so that I can get a use here and there, and I finally have enough ninjutsu that I might add um, some additional uses in at this point. Um, I also have Catwalking, Sneak Thief, and Tiger Running so I can get around the levels a little bit easier. And I've got four Catwalking and Sneak Thief so I can recast them throughout the mission, which makes it easier to just get through the levels, right? You get ambushed less, uh, and you can move through the content much more quickly. I tend to equip about two of the elemental or the purification talismans, depending on what I'm fighting. So I can swap that one out and it'll automatically reslot to wherever it is um, that I'm, you know, for the ability that I'm using. So if, I'm, if I've got lightning talisman and I swap out to a water, it'll automatically replace lightning with water. Um, I tend to run two Devigorate and two Sloth, so I can recast during the boss fight. I've also got two Barrier right now, um, two Steel Talisman, and two Pilatus. The next ability that I'm going to want to get is the Extraction Talisman, and I'll probably equip two of those as well, so that I can recast during the boss fights. Um, but now that I've got enough 
space here I can probably I'll probably get one more plate of talisman so that I've got two of each of these um, so that I can recast during the boss fight if I need to and that in a nutshell is the build um, when you start off the fight you'll want to you know if you're fighting a boss or whatever you'll want to use your sloth followed by your divigorate uh, before you go in buff yourself put up steel talisman platus uh, and um, Oh, what was the other one? Blanking. <laughs> uh, bear with me. Barrier, that's it. Yeah, so Platus and Barrier. Buff yourself with those. When you get Extraction, then you'll you'll buff with Extraction as well. Then head in. Open up with Sloth and Devigorate. Um, and make sure you have whatever your uh, Elemental buff is up and you you put up your elemental buff last actually i should mention that it's short duration so you want to buff that last after all of the other ones because they have a uh, long cast time then when you go in do sloth and invigorate and open up on the boss and hopefully you'll be able to um, stagger him before he has a chance to retaliate and go into the yokai realm and that'll let you dish out quite a bit of damage and that's basically how the build works in general um it's not like a sure I win button, but it's a pretty powerful combination all in all. You take less damage, you dish out more damage, and uh, you're pretty, you know, you're buffed up with higher key regeneration, and so on and so forth. So that's the way I like to run it for now. I uh, hope you all found that useful. I will continue building this out. So each region I clear, I'll do an updated build guide just to show you where I am at the end of that area. So thank you all for watching, and I will see you back for the next episode.